And the idea here is that if something catastrophic were to happen to the aquifer itself or the rivers that are fed, like the San Marcos River, we would have a population on station. Here, they feed and breed the Texas blind salamanders to keep the population going. But what makes this strange looking salamander a perfect mascot for the Edwards aquifer? It's got these long gangly arms, it's got these really like fluffy gills, and it's completely white. And so it's kind of a very intriguing species. And I think people gravitate to its cuteness and its slightly creepiness, but it also its mystery. And researchers here are trying to solve the mystery of the Texas blind salamander, as details about the species population can be a bit fuzzy. We do some tagging where we, when we catch animals, um, we'll release some that we catch and we'll tag them so that if we catch them again, we'll know it. And that can give us an idea of how many are down there. In reality, it's difficult to know just how large or small the Texas blind salamander population is, simply because the tiny creatures live deep underground and underwater in a vast pitch black aquifer which spans thousands of miles. But we do know that they're likely a top predator within the aquifer system, eating worms and small shrimp. Pretty much anything that swims in front of them, they'll probably try to eat it. Um, so not too discerning of an animal, but whenever there's not much down there, you have to take what you can get. Researchers have also determined that the salamanders can live for quite a long time because of their slow metabolism. We have some here that have lived about 10 to 15 years so far, but I wouldn't be surprised if they live 20 years or more. So if the Texas blind salamander lives for quite some time and their population is healthy, why do we need to regulate the water level and quality of the aquifer? They have very permeable skin. Like if, if there's some contaminant in the water, it's going to permeate them too, right? Uh, unlike us who have like very tough skin, who are very resistant to environmental changes, they're super sensitive to environment, environmental changes. And in the end, the scientists here believe conservation efforts are not just about the species we protect. Through conservation, we're actually preserving these ecosystems and these, these river systems for our use too. For the saving of a species that some people may view as pitting man versus critter or animal, we don't we don't view it that way necessarily because I think that's just a short short sighted view of the of the issue. At the end of the day, whether it's benefiting the species that live in those habitats or not, uh, it's benefiting all of us because we're ensuring that the resource remains viable for us.